Open expansion laryngoplasty is a surgical procedure to deal with combined glottis and subglottic stenosis. It is a combination of cricoid cartilage graft using rib cartilage and an arytenoidectomy. The piriform sinus mucosal flap that is developed after arytenoidectomy further enhances the endolaryngeal lumen by rotation of the flap to cover the cartilage graft. Open expansion laryngoplasty has five key components. These are one, rib cartilage harvest. Two, a unilateral arytenoidectomy followed by a cricoid split. Augmentation of the cricoid ring is done using the cartilage graft. This is followed by a piriform sinus flap that is rotated inward to expand the endolaryngeal lumen and to cover the cartilage graft. Finally, it is covered by laryngeal stenting. The equipment necessary for this is available in a laryngeal fissure set and includes an oscillating saw, elevators, retractors, and the use of standard medium Montgomery laryngeal stent. The sutures include monocryl, vicryl, and proline. The key components it starts with an anterior and posterior cricoid split along with laryngeal fissure. The retractors are used to open the laryngeal fissure to view the internal posterior aspects of the larynx. An artist's rendition shows the key components of the open expansion laryngoplasty. The key components is the posterior cricoid split, followed by a unilateral arytenoidectomy while preserving the mucosa over the arytenoid cartilage. Once the posterior cricoid split has been augmented using the costal cartilage graft, the piriform sinus and arytenoid mucosa is then rotated downward to the inferior aspect of the cricoid cartilage to cover the costal cartilage graft. In this way, the composite tissue used for expansion includes both cartilage as well as vascularized mucosa. We will now show the open expansion laryngoplasty in a dissection on a cadaver. This is a preoperative view of the patient with posterior stenosis. The costal cartilage graft has already been performed. The laryngoplasty starts with an anterior posterior cricoid split along with laryngo fissure. The uh, standard oscillating saw is used to perform this part of the procedure. The internal anatomy of the larynx is now shown on this picture. The posterior cricoid split has now been performed through the cricoid, and we also cut through the interarytenoideous muscles to free the stenosis. Once the posterior cricoid split is completed, we will proceed to elevate the mucosa over the arytenoid, arytenoid for uh, the arytenoidectomy. The arytenoidectomy removes only the cartilage and not the mucosa. A superiorly based U-shaped flap is used to dissect the um, uh, mucosa from the cartilage. After the arytenoid cartilage is exposed, it is uh, carefully removed the arytenoid is removed by using an Adson forceps and Metzen baum scissor so that only the cartilage portion is removed. A complete arytenoidectomy is performed. This will then free up the piriform sinus and arytenoid mucosa for the mucosal flap, which is then rotated downward to cover the costal cartilage graft. Here you can see the 
uh, graft in place. And once we remove the cartilage, as will be seen here, the mucosa flap, here's the removal of the cartilage, the retinoid cartilage, followed by the downward folding of the mucosal flap all the way to the inferior portion of the cricoid cartilage. The, the mucosal flap is then sutured over the cartilage using 3O vicryl sutures. And this will then be covered and stented using a standard medium Montgomery laryngeal stent with a typical uh, placement. The laryngeal lumen is then closed using 3O Vicro sutures in a standard manner with a stent removed in two weeks. This is the post-operative examination showing the expansion of the posterior larynx. This is a uh, intraoperative view showing the mucosal flap in place along with the arytenoidectomy and then the expansion of the posterior larynx. Thank you very much for your attention.